Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to make this kind of designs inside Simmons NX. Okay. Now, this is more like a very complex design, which we normally take a lot of time to do. So I'm going to show you the easiest and the fastest way of making this particular type of designs. Okay. So stick with the stick with me till the end and follow the video along so that you can properly create this kind of designs. Now, to start with, we are going to start with a new part file or new model file. You can even define the name and the location if you want to save the file. I'm not going to save the file, so I'm not defining the name and the location. The first sketch which I'm going to create will be on the front plane. I'm going to click OK on the front plane after selecting the front plane. And here I'm going to create three lines. So from the origin, a vertical line, then a horizontal line, and one more horizontal line in the bottom. So here I've created three lines. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define some dimensions to it. So let's say this vertical line will be of length 140. This horizontal line will be of length 30 and this top horizontal line will be of length 20. Okay, so here I have defined some dimensions to the line. Now let us try to create a basic shape of the vase. So for doing that, I'm going to click on spline and inside spline, I'm going to select by pole option. And here I'm going to start from here, from the top end point, one, two, the third point will be after the second point, three, and fourth point will be over here. So this is how I've defined the four points. Okay, so don't worry about it. I'm going to give some dimensions to it so that you can also create a similar spline. So here, this vertical distance, I'm going to define this as 30. And this horizontal distance, I'm going to define this also as 30. This gap, I'm going to make it 5. Okay, so basically this is a gap between the first and the second point. And this height, I'm going to make it 45. So this is how I've created my spline. Now, once I'm done with this, I'm click on clicking on finish. And then I will, I will press escape and I'll click on revolve. Now here I'm going to select the single curve that is the spline itself. In axis, I'm going to select this vertical line and I'm going to revolve this not by 360 degree by 15 degree. But by default, this 15 degree revolution will go on the other side. So what I'll do, I'll click on this button called reverse direction in order to change the direction of revolve. So it should come on this side, okay, on the left side of the sketch. Now if I click OK, this is how the revolve is going to look like. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hide my sketch and I'm going to create a new sketch on the right plane. So basically this right plane is the plane on which uh, the, the entire thing is going to look like. Now this is the most complicated sketch and this for this you need uh, you know most attention. So here I'm going to create a profile. I'm going to create a vertical line, then a horizontal line, then a slant line, then again a horizontal line. So let us first give dimension to this set of lines and then continue with the next line. So here, Let's say, for example, from this point to this point, the gap I want to give as 1 mm. So here the gap between the two sides is 1. And from this point till the top, the gap is 5. The length of this vertical line is going to be suppose 17. The length of this horizontal line is going to be 5. Okay. The length of this vertical line or this particular slant line is going to be 20. And the length of this horizontal line is going to be 13. Okay, so don't worry, I've written the dimensions out so that I clearly remember what dimensions I have to provide. Now, here, why I'm providing this dimension, you will understand in a minute. Now, here I'm creating few more lines, vertical line, your horizontal line, again, a vertical line, again, a horizontal line. Okay, so I'm creating few more lines here. And then again, I'm going to give dimension to those lines. Now, here, let's say this vertical line, okay, this vertical line will have a length of 21 then this vertical line will have a length of 25 and this vertical line will have a length of 27 so this is how i'm providing all the dimensions so 21 25 and 27 this horizontal line is going to have a length of 13 so yeah i guess 13 is already defined so this one is going to be 16 then this horizontal line is going to be 18 then i have to create few more lines now a few set of lines one horizontal, one slant, one horizontal, one vertical. Again, we will define the dimensions over here first. So this point to the origin, this gap is going to be 2.5. And here, this gap is going to be 1.5. And the, on the upper side, it was 5 and 1. But here it is 1.5 and 2.5. The length of this line, this vertical line itself, is going to be 12.5. Okay, the length of this vertical line, is going to be 25. So I guess it has been already taken by the software. So I'll just delete this dimension for now. Okay. And this angle over here is going to be 60. And this gap 
over here is going to be 25. Okay, so this one is 25. So almost all the dimensions now have been defined for this particular object. So there is no uh, auto dimensions, I guess, which is remaining. So I'll just check. There is an auto dimension here. So I guess I'm yet to define the angle somewhere. So everything is looking good. So far, okay, yeah, one dimension over here. That is the length of five. So the horizontal line length is five. Now everything has been defined properly. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to click on this option called spline. Now here I'm going to use bipole, but with a degree of seven. So that will increase the smoothness of the spline. Okay, and this line will now play a very important role and it will make the process of creating the spline a lot easier. So now I'm going to click on all these endpoints. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So after the eighth point, you can see the preview of the spline. Ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th, and 17th, and 18th. So here I've created my spline. The reason of defining this set of dimension was the spline should remain inside the surface. So that was the only reason of defining this dimension. Now I'll click on offset command. Now here in offset, I'm going to select single curve as a selection rule. The offset dimension will be 0.75. Create dimension and symmetry offset will be on. Uh, you can say convert input curve to reference option also will be on. The degree will be three for now. Okay, so here if I select the spline, it will create an offset on two sides and the center one will become in reference. Okay. Now if I zoom in and if I notice the entire spline is within the face. So that was the whole reason or the whole purpose of creating this sketch. Now I'll click on finish. So this is how the sketch is going to look like. The first thing what we are going to do is we are going to click on curve. We are, click, we are going to click on project curve. We are going to select both the splines one by one as the one which we want to project as a single curve selection rule. Now here I'm going to select the face on which I want to project and in direction along vector, I'm going to select this arrow. Okay. So here I'll click okay. And this is how the projection is going to look like. Now, once the projection is also completed, then I have to do some sweep. Now I can hide the sketch because the work of the sketch is done. Now I'll click on sketch again, uh, but this time I'll create a sketch on a path and I'm going to select this spline, the first one as the first path. Now I'm going to take it to the very end and going to click OK. And here if I zoom in, I can see N and T. N means normal, T means tangent. So here I'm going to create a vertical line. Technically that will be a normal line. Let's say of length 1 mm. Okay, so you can define whatever length you want. This length is not at all important. Okay, if you skip the definition of length also fine. Now again, I'll create one more sketch. Exactly on the other side as well, like on the other line as well. And this line again, will be from the same point of length 1 mm. So both the sketches are same. They are both perpendicular to the spline. Okay. And they are both created with the same length. So now I'll go for the surface tab and now I'll click on the swept command. Now here in swept command, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select single curve. This is the curve which I'm going to swept. Now here in guide, I'm going to select single curve. This is the guide which I'm going to use. Now here in section location, it will be anywhere. Preserve shape will be on, parameter will be on. In orientation, I'm going to select face normal and I'm going to select this face. Okay, so this is how the orientation is going to look like. In scaling, it will be constant of one. Now here, if I click on apply, so this first sweep is completed. Now, I can select the second section. Then I can select the second guide. Then again, in face normal, select face. I'm going to select this face. And now my second sweep is also completed. Okay, now if I hide the two sweep, this is how it's going to look like. Now what I can do is I can go to the home tab and choose the option called divide face. Now using divide face, what technically we can do is we can divide this faces, this single face into multiple face using my spline. Okay. So now my face has been divided. Okay. And now if I show my sweep, this is how it's going to look like. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on the home tab. I'll go for mirror geometry. Okay. So here we have total of three geometry, two surfaces, Okay, and the single surface which was created using revolve. So what I'm going to do is in geometry, mirror geometry option, in select geometry, I'm going to select the revolved surface and the right side sweep surface. Okay, the right side one. Okay, the one which is created on the right side. Okay. Now here in mirror plane, mirror plane, I'm going to select this plane and this is how the sweep is going to look like. 
or this is how the mirror is going to look like okay now again i am going to select the geometries this one and the left one now okay the main revolve surface in the left one now i want to mirror this on this side as well and to do that what i'll do is i'll keep this on inferred and i'll try to select this plane but this is not giving me the appropriate result so what i'll do i'll select this option called through object and select this arc okay so here i have selected an option called through object and selected that arc so now the mirror is ready okay so this is how the entire geometry is going to look like now first of all what i'm going to do is i want to get rid of this extra faces okay so i'll click on delete face okay here in delete i am going to deactivate the heal option and i'm going to select the surface so that is going to get deleted this one and this one apply then this one and this one then apply then this one and this one and then okay so this is how i can use delete face to get rid of those extra faces okay now once i'm done with the deleting part now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hide this flat faces and to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change my selection filter to sheet body i'm going to select each of these bodies and i'm going to hide it okay so i have only this bodies over here right now okay now the important part will come to create that design now to create that design i'm going to click on the surface tab i'm going to click on this option called through curve i'll just reset it so that everything becomes default or back to normal here in section curve i'm going to select single curve this will be the first section curve the bottom line okay and then i'll click on add and this will be the second section the bottom line now here what i want is i want first section to be curvature to this face okay so you can see the result is coming like this and the second section should also be curvature to this face okay and it should flow with a perpendicular direction okay so you might get a result like this where it is coming upward so what i can do is i can technically try to flip this sections so that it comes downward so the section i have to just click on the section and i have to click on this flip button or reverse direction button so that it will come on the bottom side so now if i click okay this is how the result is going to look like okay so first design element is ready now let us prepare for the second one as well so i'll go for through curve again and here again i'm going to select the single curve here then add the single curve here in section number 1 curvature face will be this in section number 2 the curvature face will be this and the flow direction is going to be perpendicular and by default it is looking correct so i don't have to change the direction or anything like that i'll click okay okay now i'll show all the geometries which i have just hidden so here the divide face geometry uh, the mirror geometries okay so all the geometries which are hidden now visible okay now i'm going to delete some geometries from here so do do to do that i'll go to the home tab i'll click on delete body command i'll select the right side flat face and all this vertical sweep faces to get rid of so once i get rid of those faces this is how the geometry is going to look like now i'll go to the home tab i'll choose pattern geometry i'll select 1 2 3 4 geometries here i am going to choose the layout called circular in rotation axis i am going to select the z axis and i want 12 copies in 360 degree i'll click okay so this is how the entire geometry or the copies are going to look like now to combine everything together in a in a single body i am going to click on surface i am going to click on sew now it might happen like this see right now i have the last command is pattern geometry i'll select any one body and i'll press control a to select the remaining geometries now here if i click okay it might can happen that you might find multiple sew command here that means everything cannot be sewed into a single body in that condition you have to undo you have to click on sew again target body will be one sheet body again control a but here try a loser tolerance so here the tolerance is 0.01 i'll just make it one for now and here if i click okay now the output should contain a single sweep or a single uh, sew command now i want all of these edges to be filleted with a radius of 0.75 so here i'll go for home tab edge blend i'll choose the option called feature intersection give the radius of 0.75 before i do any selection and here i'm going to click on the sew command so all the edges which are formed because of sew will now get a radius of 0.75 now here if i click okay this is how it's going to look like now what i'm going to do is i want to make it flat from the top and from the bottom to do that i'm going to click on sketch i'm going to click on sketch on a plane and i can choose right plane or front plane whichever i feel like then i'm going to create two lines one horizontal line like this on the top and one horizontal line like this on the bottom so i'm going to create two lines here 
So the bottom line will have a gap of phi. This gap will be of phi. Okay, so I'll undo this again and again I'll define the gap. So rather than 4.9, this will be of phi. Okay, and this top line will also have a gap of phi. So rapid dimension from let's say this point till here, the gap is going to be phi. For the bottom line, the gap is from the origin. For the top line, you can select any point. Okay, that will be fine. Now here I'll click on finish. Then I'll click on extrude. And while extruding, I have to extrude it this much that it covers the entire geometry and it should be a symmetrical extrude. So here I'll go for symmetry value. Boolean is set to none, I'll click OK. So this is how the extrude is going to look like. Now I can hide my sketches and this is how the output or the end result is going to look like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the surface tab. I'm going to select trim and extend. And inside trim and extend, I'm going to select make corner. Now I'm going to select this as the first target body and this as the second target body. Okay, or the tool body and this is how the corner is going to look like. After completing this command, like if you select this body and along with that this body as well. So after completing this command, this entire thing is going to look like a solid body or actually it's going to be a solid body. Okay, so now the entire object is now a solid body. Now what I'm going to do is I want to make it hollow from inside. I can definitely use shell command to make it hollow. So if I use the shell command, let's say with a thickness of 2mm and if I select this face to be open from the top, uh, the problem is going to be hollow without any problem. There will be no difficulties in making the body hollow, but it is not going to look good from inside. So I want to make a body hollow in a specific way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sketch. Let's say again on the front or on the right plane. Okay, so I'm going to start with a line first. So I'm creating a horizontal line. Okay, now this line is particularly going to be horizontal with any of the top endpoint. So I'm going to select any top endpoint and I'm going to make it horizontal. For some time, I'm going to hide this body, the extruded body, this one. Okay, for some time, I'm going to hide this. And this point is going to be vertical with this as well. Okay, the length of this line is going to be suppose 15. So this line length is going to be 15. Now here I'm going to create one circle in the bottom and this circle will be exactly again on the same line. Now this circle distance is going to be 50 and the diameter is going to be 80. And then I'm going to create a line which is tangential from this side to this side. Now again, I'll create one vertical line which is going to look somewhat like this. Then I'm going to use the trim command to get rid of this extra shape. So ultimate result is going to look like this. Now once I get this ready, now I can click on finish. Okay, I can show the body which I have just hidden. I can select the sketch, I can click on revolve. And here in vector, I can select the line itself. And what I want is I want a 360 degree revolve. Okay, so I guess I've selected a wrong vector. So I'll select the line as a vector. Okay, 360 degree revolve and I want to subtract this. So once I subtract this, this is how it's going to look like. Okay, from inside. So if I show you the section view by pressing Ctrl H, this is how it's going to look like. Okay, now I can also go for a chamfer command here on this edge. Let's say I want to create a symmetrical chamfer of 3, that is fine. And then I want to create an edge blend of radius 2, suppose, on single curve top edge and the bottom edge. And I'll click OK. So this is how you can create a very complicated diagram like this. Okay. So you can go to the view tab, you can click on perspective, you can choose studio to get it better, to get a better look. You can press Ctrl J and give it a color also. For example, I want to give this color. Okay. So you can create this kind of complex designs very easily using Siemens NX. So I hope you understood this model. I hope you understood this design. Okay. Uh, if you are able to complete this design, you can also comment, uh, you, you can also take a screenshot and comment it in the comment section below about this design. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and have a great day.